everybody. This video is part of a series where I'm showing how to use different types of framing to enhance image composition. If you'd like to download a PDF in either US letter or A4 paper size pre-formatted with these framing layouts on them, there's a link in the video description and they are yours to download and share for free. In this video, like the rest in the most of the rest in this series, we're going to look at three different images that follow this composition guideline. This is triangular composition, and it's defined by a diagonal line that goes from one corner to the other, and then a diagonal line that is perpendicular to the first, which goes from the corner to the first line, from each corner to the first line. This creates two identical but reverse triangles that comprise the majority of the image with supporting triangles that are identical but also reversed on the other side. And what we're going to do is this looks odd and off balance, and it is. And we're going to take a look at how it creates some visually captivating images to follow this type of framing setup. The first image we're going to look at is a nature image. It's, it's a squirrel monkey. And there's no triangles in this. We've got this roundish squirrel monkey with lots of fur and he's, he's holding his eye. And, and, and then this plain green background and there's no triangles. Oh, yes there are. So we can see here we've got the primary line and visual points of interest. The squirrel monkey's ear and his closed eye and his hand and this little ray of light which has come through his fingers here all fall right along that primary line. At this intersection we have his hand and this intersection of the triangles does a fairly good job of framing where his hand is located. The second line here runs basically along his back, setting up the majority of the squirrel monkey to be in this lower triangle with an equal amount of visual interest, if not more, in this upper triangle and then what is basically negative space in these smaller ones. And the result is that we have a visually interesting image and it feels balanced because the squirrel monkey is fairly centered, but it feels slightly off balance because it's framed in a manner which places the key visual interest in opposite and in opposition areas of the frame. But this isn't this this is a this is a framing style which is very well suited to, to nature. And in a minute we'll see how it's very well suited to architecture as well. But it's also very well suited to abstract imagery. Now I know what you're saying. This triangle is going the wrong way. Clearly I'm nuts in suggesting that this follows the triangle framing style, correct? Well not if you reverse the triangles. You don't have to just have this is the mask and the, the orientation we saw before. You can flip it, and in this case you can see that this triangle and this abstract image follows the triangle guide almost perfectly. A little bit off here. This is a gigantic block of negative space, which is countered by this negative space here, and then this curving element moves between these two triangular spaces, giving this triangle a lot of visual importance because the only non-straight non part of the image goes from the bottom up through here and is most in focus right here, right where the image's light source is set. And so th this image is one that is composed with triangular framing in mind to create a visual interest that moves your eye through the image along set perpendicular lines. Now here's one more, a little bit cropped, um, but that's okay. And you can probably see right now how the triangular framing is going to be apparent in this. And I was a little bit off when I did my framing, but you can see that the actual line of the library of the San Francisco Public Library here follows this diagonal pretty closely. Uh, this was an older picture of mine before I'd really nailed how to do this type of framing, but in general you can see that decomposition follows the rules of this type of framing. 
this triangle area over here has close foreground visual interest leading into this central area which has a visual interest which moves in the other direction creating a triangle up here triangle over here and we have in this triangular area the merging of the foreground and background in this triangle we have a triangle of negative space and in this triangle we have kind of a triangle-ish type of negative space but this triangle here of negative space spans these areas and repeated throughout this image is this triangular shape but looking at it it really looks like it's an image made of squares so we have this square here square blocks and so this image framing sets the squares of the building's design into this triangular setting which sets the shapes in opposition but also makes them work together to create this overarching triangular layout to this image. So this is my triangular framing video. If you if this video was helpful, please let me know. Please give me a thumbs up that lets me know I'm on the right track. If you have questions about how to do triangular framing, situations where it's good or not good, please let me know and I'm more than happy to answer those for you and give you some additional tips. This video is part of a larger series where we're going to look at things like quadrant framing, rule of thirds with quadrant considerations, of course triangles, diagonals, and a very special and very difficult framing method of the golden rule, golden ratio rather. So if you have any suggestions for future videos, please let me know. And of course, feel free to download the framing guide PDFs that are linked in the description. And one last thing, thank you guys for watching and take great photos.